Hey, welcome back. Uh, in this session, I'm gonna talk to you how to start building forms from scratch because any prototype you might have is gonna require some sort of user input, be it a contact form or data submission or upload or like, you know, kind of like a guided navigation of sort. It's like, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to build it and how to make it smart as well. So let's jump right into it. Um, so imagine that we have some sort of form to build. We have a design ready. Uh, we just need to replicate and start adding, imagine like a data upload or data submission form for this case. We have all these widgets, which are defined in the form section as a widget. As you can see, we have text field, text area, which is basically a bit bigger input field, uh, which you could then use, let's say for comments in contact us forms. We have a drop list, which is basically a, a drop down uh, in other words. Let's make it a bit different in these two cases. And then we have checkboxes and radio buttons. Now, checkboxes are quite simple. We can name this. And let's see, let's add a couple of labels to our form. And then I want to add, let's say, a couple of radio buttons. And imagine that in this case, users are able to either upload a, a file or they can just submit a link. And depend on what we choose, we could also provide contextual forms, you know, um, provide extra information, which I'm also going to show you how to do. But for now, let's say, let's do this. Um, and what our form needs as well is probably a submit button. Let's just say submit. But now we have some sort of form. If we go step by step, oh, just to provide one label for this. You can customize every field almost by just right clicking and having all the options you can do. So let's say you can edit text, you can set input type. So let's say if it's password, it's going to be masked automatically. Um, if it's email, it's going to think that, you know, you need an ad sign and you can add some logic to validate it and, and so forth. But you also can, let's say, edit max uh, length. You can disable it if you assign the style as shown. Uh, you can assign a submit button, which is basically saying that, you know, once it's pressed, you can validate the fields. So you can add a lot of different logic to it. But I, what I want to do is just set uh, the hint text. And if you click on that settings icon next to the, uh, the name of the field, which I think it's a bit hidden, it could be, you know, uh, shown a, a bit more, but this is action nine beta. So maybe they're going to pull it out a little bit more. The hint text could be something like, uh, EG, uh, John Smith. And as you can see, you can also select one to hide it. Um, I usually go, uh, on focus. So when the user clicks, it's just going to hide it. And then we're able to enter, or you could do by typing when we start typing tooltip. We don't really need. Uh, no submit buttons assigned, but if I would want to, I would select that submit button. Um, max length, read only, you know, all those options you could select if you want to. And I can just show you that if I select disabled, now it appears disabled and I can't really edit it as a user. Really quick to preview it. As you can see, I can select drop down if there are options or select tick boxes, but I'm not able to select the actual uh, name field. Okay, so let me just go back and we have a tooltip ready and you can actually preview right away. You can style the text just like a normal field there would be. Um, let's see for data type, if we want to pre-populate with options, then the drop down, you just double click it and you can add many, let's say, or add one by one, but let's say data type is XML, JSON, phew, I don't know, HTML, could be that it's just a CSV, you know, all those different types. And we can select which one is the primary. By default, it's going to be top like this. Or we can also add something like select an option if we want to do it manually like this. As you can see, there are no kind of placeholder text for uh, drop down items, rightfully so. But we can make it, you know, interactive looking. And when the users, if you want to edit it, we can just select which data type you want. So it's easy as that. Now, checkboxes are quite as well easy to do. Um, it's quite simple if their behavior, you either tick it or untick it. So it's true or false. But now, radio buttons is really, really interesting, especially if you're getting started with the forms, because by default, uh, they're not gonna behave as radio buttons, meaning it's not gonna be one or the other and I can't even untick it after I'm ticking it. We would need to group them 
and that's really interesting but really simple functionality by Axure. So we have those two different radio options. What we need to do is just select them both and we can, by selecting the settings icon, assign it to a radio group. Now, since there are no radio groups created yet, I would just name it something like file selection. That's it. And now by default, we have nothing selected, uh, just to incentivize the user to make up their mind. Uh, you could argue both ways, but let's say that we are just allowing the user to select whichever we want. And if we select one or the other, it just goes from one to the other as a toggle. And that's easily done just by grouping them. So as simple as that. Now, what happens if let's say you want to take user to a next page after submit button? We're gonna cover the validation of actual fields a little bit later on, but I just wanted to, to show, you know, how to kind of assign and, and take the information provided to the next page and maybe create a journey and a story which you can actually test on users. Imagine that we cr we're, we're just submitting the information for now. And just imagine that we are actually just gonna allow the users to provide the URL. If I can change URL and just say, just change those options uh, for the sake of uh, an example to submit a link or submit a link on Google Drive or something like that. Imagine that there's just two different options and then you are able to select that file location here. Um, I'm gonna rename it for good measure URL. And imagine if we click on submit, we want to display some sort of tick box and successfully submitted message. Now what I would do here, I would either create a separate page with that message or I could use dynamic panel. And if you remember from my previous video, dynamic panels are great for this because users don't have to leave a page and it can be all in line. So if I create a dynamic panel out of this and name it form, I can create a separate state by clicking here um, and name it congrats. Or I could name it an error if I add a validation to it, which I'm gonna cover next video. And now I just want to add, let's say a tick. So I'm using noun project to add an icon let's say it's this one that we're looking for again the styling doesn't really matter for now as long as it does the trick you can make it pretty if you want to but basically now we have two states that or that and all we need to do is go to assign an action to this button saying on click please change this panel state of the form to something to the say congrats state. And let's actually animate it, fade in, fade out. That's about it. If a user, let's say now goes through this flow and your user testing, they can just enter, let's say my name. They can select what they want to do JSON submission, notify that there is something new, submit the link through a server. And they submit it and boom. It's done. So you almost already can simulate the basic interaction. And that's how you do the basic forms with the basic options. Again, I would recommend to experiment and just try to find a case where we actually need to use it. Because when you're pushed and you're challenged, you're going to find ingenious ways to how to solve it. If you like this video, give thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below how else you would solve this. And stay tuned for more videos where I'm going to go into validation or the other advanced bits.